earlier goings on Twitter. I've seen a tweet from you. Oh, yeah. Said you'll be seething. Oh. That was your own word, seething, of the fixtures. The Man City fixture was rearranged for Wednesday the 19th. Which, when it's been <laughs> rearranged for, are you seething? Um, maybe I'm not quite as seething as I was, but only because I've had time to acclimatise to the news. It was actually quite funny because I put a video out this morning advocating uh, the benefits, let's say, of the extended break. And then um, I think it was Jazz on the comments on the video said, oh, by the way, mate, it's going to be uh, it's going to be moved to next Wednesday. And then it sort of got I say confirmed, sort of semi-confirmed that it wasn't. They weren't going to do it. So then I calmed down and then it was just announced from somewhere, um, I guess from the clubs and from the Premier League, I say from somewhere, that it was going to be next Wednesday. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty damn cross about it, Gio, to be perfectly honest with you, mate. Um, could you not argue, though, that basically if you have a look at when Man City's three weeks would be, there's a good chance the game would have been played before our game against... Norwich, or before a game against Aston Villa on the last uh, week of the season. So, I mean, arguably, could you not say that it's better for us to have a rest prior to those matches? No, I'd, I'm, I'm quite... Well, firstly, I think the first conversation that should have been had was... I mean, we don't know who made this decision, but there's some... But I, so easy to go wading in, or Brady, or Gold, or Sullivan, but somebody at the club's made a decision. I mean, let's not rule out it. It might have been David Moyes, of course. Um... But I do think the first thing that should have been said was, well, hold on a second. We've actually sent our fans up on a wild goose chase on a, on a windy. Um, I know it's weekend, but it's Sunday's Sunday's a different day. So everyone's at work the next day. We've already sent people up on a wild goose chase. Whatever we do, let's go from the start point that we are not going to send our fans up to Manchester on a school night, regardless of whether we're going to pay for the coach travel or not, which they've agreed to do. Let's, let's get it at a weekend. So I think that's the starting point. I, I think the fact that they've decided and in their in their infinite wisdom to go on a weekday night, I think it's just horrendous for the fans. I think it's rude, actually, um, and very, very wrong. My argument for... Well, for, that, for those of you who haven't heard my argument over the, the last day or two, has been that I, I think this has been a really useful time for us to bed in with two new coaches, two new players on the training field, and particularly a manager who's, who's not had much time to bed his ideas in, who keeps switching formations, to actually bed down one formation and drill it time after time after time, repetition on the training ground. We've also seen the thing, Geo, of, of people complaining. I think James Collins was complaining that Mark Noble was... Was feeling the, uh, the the stress. I do think it's been a toxic environment to play in. So I think it was helpful for the, the players to get away, just for their mindset. Regardless of whether you think they should be fit, and we had a we had a more um, an easier Christmas period than the others. I think it's probably healthy for a lot of our players to get away from that toxic situation surrounding the club. And then I thought, come back ten days on the training pitch. And I think when you feed it all into the, the fact that. Actually, I think we chose poorly with Liverpool. We were doing Liverpool a favour on the rearranged schedule. They were going off to the um, the World Club Championships, or whatever you want to call it. There was a chance there for us to really play that to our advantage. They wanted to go. They were asking a favour from us. And I feel we rolled over and had our tummies tickled a little bit on that one. And I feel this is much the same. And, and if you honestly believe... Why well, not you do? But I mean, if one honestly believes the goal difference is going to play a, a part and are staying up this season. It doesn't matter whether you think City's first team is significantly better than their second team or whatever. Surely, us getting them when they have their eye on other things, when they're playing, let's let's be perfectly honest with you, we'd rather them play John Stones and Laporte, for instance, and, and just, just carry that on throughout their first 11. It might, even if you think we're going to lose, it might make a difference between a, a 5-0 thrashing and a 1-0 loss. If you believe... But goal difference can come into it. I, I just think it was for almost every single reason, in my opinion, I think it was the wrong decision. Uh, for what it's worth, I wouldn't have changed it either. Uh, I wouldn't have agreed to this one either. I was just trying to play devil's advocate for the part of it because I do think fan base are split on this one. I do think a lot of people are happy with it being played now. Um, so fair enough, but it's just a pity that one of us don't disagree with each other for the sake of the arguments. So we're trying to be a bit mm. 
bullshit about it. But um, I'm the same. I would have had it when City don't want to. If City are happy to play on the 19, it means they want to play on the 19. So I say, no, just don't let them play when they want to. Um, I think I'd like the club to do something for the fans that attend. Whether that is give them the, the, the third shirt or something. You know, where you turn up at the turnstiles. What size are you? Here you go. Here's a free shirt for you. But let's face it. They're, they're, they're only going to be a £10 in a couple of months anyway. They're not going to be a tenner on the shop. So just give them something to say thank you for your coming and supporting and stuff. Because it is harsh on the fans. It's unfair on the fans that are going. Um, as for us, I think we'll be suitably prepared, as, as prepared can be, I guess. Um, we've had a bit longer. The players have had a, quite a few days off at this point. Even I think they've had five days off in total. I don't know if that's been cut short. My, Moyes might cut it short now he's got a game prepared for, but I'd be surprised if he did, because even if they come back on Saturday, they've still got four or five days of training ahead of the, the City game. Um, I, I, I guess it suits... It, I can see both sides of the argument, but I would have played it when City don't fancy it, which is not next Wednesday. And also, we would have been able to perhaps pick up a bit of form. If we, I don't know, when we played it, if we played Burnley, for example, then we played City and we'd beat Burnley, we'd be going up to the Etihad with a win behind us. And we might have been outside the bottom three, whatever. Bourne might have got a couple of goals for us. Antonio's been fit for a month and really getting into the stride of things. Um, we don't know, but saying that, we could have also went up there with Antonio injured again or whatever. But the circumstances would have been different. We would perhaps not have gone to Etihad in the bottom three, or it could have been that we'd, gone to, we'd be going there, 19, four points adrift, thinking, well, we better, we better put out our second team here and just throw this game and concentrate on the next one, which is Norwich. Um, so I don't know. I, can, I see more positives and advantages for not playing it next Wednesday yeah, yeah. than you do for playing it. Um, so I would have liked to have sort of... The Liverpool game you alluded to, I don't think there's anything you can do because that's a, a sort of consequence of them winning the Champions League, which overrules the Premier League, unfortunately. Uh, European football comes so, so, so. I, I don't blame the Liverpool thing, but this City thing, I certainly would not agree to. But like you said, we don't know who the club has said, yeah, let's go for it. It could be David Moyes. And if it has... Fair enough. You make your own bed, but I do think decisions should lie with David Moyes in this instance. Actually, oh, I, for sure. I, I, I hope that someone hasn't made the call and gone against what David Moyes wishes. I hope it's David Moyes that said, "I want to play the game next Wednesday," because I just think it'd be wrong, wouldn't it, to go against the manager and maybe say, you, "Actually, you you're going to have to go up there and play that game." All that training schedule you had planned, forget it. You've now you're now going up to Manchester. Uh, say you do have Leicester though. We played them on the Wednesday. City are away to Leicester on the Saturday. Um, slight benefit, perhaps. That's a much bigger game. And if Pen what the, the Saturday afterwards? Yeah, immediately. So three, four days later, they're playing, and then and they've got you know the FA Cup. They've got Real Madrid away. They've got Man United. Um, they've got they've got what is it six games in eighteen days. And we are very much the easier game out of all six and stuff. So if he is going to rescue players, Pep, you have to remember, this is Pep's been, along the clock, has been banging the drum for a winter break. This is cutting into their winter break. He won't be happy. So while they're playing it, Pep's got no choice because of the fixture congestion they've got. We don't have that. They've got it. So they don't really have an option. Say, have to just play ASAP because they've got the Arsenal fixture to try and squeeze in as well. Um... So, yeah, I don't know. It's next Wednesday anyway. So, where do you want to start? Anything in particular you want to start with? Well, so just to continue on that before yes. we do, I do hope that what you said has not happened. I do hope the players haven't, for instance, been given six days off and then recalled after four or something like that. And, and I get the argument. I hear what a lot of people are saying. These precious wallflowers have done next to nothing all season. Why should they get a break and all the rest of it? But actually... That's that's that that's true if everybody is mentally robust, but not everybody is mentally robust. So, you know, everybody needs a break at some point, and I just think, regardless of whether you feel they're pampered multimillionaires or or you don't, I, I don't think anybody likes to be recalled back off their break. If you've taken a if you've taken a family to Portugal for five days, and actually you get called and say, actually, you, you, you know, you've got to come back early. <laughs> Should we feel sorry for them if they're, you know, they got called off the yacht earlier? Maybe not, but it still doesn't put them in a particularly good mindset coming back. So I do hope, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, that's 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 another one of my concerns with it, really. But do you know what? It's it's done now, and 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 
look, who, who knows? We don't even know what the result of the game is going to be, of course. But uh, hopefully, we don't get an absolute tonking, you know? Yeah, I mean, I can't remember if I said it in the last cup of tea, the mug of tea we did for the patrons. I said to you about how Sam Aldice said there's only two things football you can you can give footballers. One's money. They're already rich. They don't need the money. And the other one is time. That's the thing that can motivate players. And, we, and like you said, I just hope they're not taking the time away from them because... I, I agree, I do think they need it in terms of mentally getting away they might not like each other in the change room there might be things going on we don't know, I'm not saying there is this is just purely me just taking a punt here and if there is, it's maybe good to do them a part and whatever and calm down and come back, refresh, re-energise and ready to go um, well, the club have taken a bit of a battering over the last few days from the media so where do we start? do you want to start with Oliver Holt? do you want to start with David Gold? or do you want to start with the junior supporter board? Do do the junior supporter board because I don't know an awful lot about it. I've, obviously, I've seen a I've seen a tweet and yeah, I may have just maybe remind myself and the uh, and the the viewers of the details. Yeah. Um, so to, without quoting uh, the tweets of that, um, the, the OSB's official supporters board, which the club make up, yada yada yada. You, 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 we've always assumed you know, but now again we get a comment underneath going, "What is the OSB? It's official supporters board that the club." It's made up of fans that liaise with the club to improve things for West Ham fans. Uh, as a subgroup of that, there's one called the Junior Supporters Board, which is, as it's titled, is for the juniors. It's, it's made up of the younger fans, which work with the club to improve things for the younger fans, which I think is good. I like this. I like that concept. I think it's good. It's a good thing to do. However, uh, over the weekend, I think it was Saturday, a new account was created on Twitter by the name of Amelia. Um, her name was Junior Supporter Board, but she said that she was called Amelia. And she started tweeting Karen Brady about the mascot prices and how they had a meeting last year and it was brought up about this mascot prices. She, Amelia, followed up with the club, said, Hello, are we doing anything with the mascot prices? And she never got a reply. And she tried to follow up again post Christmas, still didn't get a reply. And then when the club put up an article last week about the meeting um, coming up and, and whatever, and, and in that it mentioned about the mascot prices or whatever. So, of course, Amelia was thinking, hang on a minute. I've not heard anything about this. The Junior Supporters Board have heard nothing about this, but yet you're making on that it's all been decided. So she tweeted Karen Brady, basically get called Karen Brady out. <laughs> and the, I don't know how old she is. She's in her teens somewhere. Um... But this young girl called out Karen Brady. Karen has replied. Um, she doesn't reply to many West Ham fans, Karen, but she has replied publicly to say, don't worry, you're not going to be kicked off the board. Your passion is what we want on the board. And we're looking into this and apologise for that and stuff. Um, but yeah, so interesting. But this, what's followed on from this, now I'm not saying that this has made this happen, but today there was an article or uh, articles going around that, um, it cost £700 to be a mascot at West Ham United, the dearest in the Premier League. And uh, the Premier League clubs generate roughly half a million pounds in revenue from mascot packages over the season. West Ham account for 20% of that. That's a big number. I think, um, I mean, obviously the, the intricacies of the story that you, you just described from Amelia messaging Karen Brady... I don't know. You've obviously just described that far more loosely than I could. Uh, but the very concepts of a company, a football club, a sporting enterprise, franchise, whatever way you want to look at it, generating £190 million a year, which is our turnover. And then, I, I understand there's a tiered system. I, I get that. We understand that that's seven hundred quid for the most expensive games, and and they and for the most prominent games, and they will suggest that they will give some mascot packages away. That 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 will be the the counter argument. But for somebody to that that gets that much money in per year, a hundred and ninety million, to basically put a seven hundred pound price tag on what is a kids' afternoon out is. It's an absolute shocker. It's it's overpriced for starters, but even taking that consumer aspect out of it, it is morally wrong. It is absolutely 
classed as this should be put in with the foundation and all the other stuff i'm a firm believer that a mascot place is part of your community work there's no good saying you're going to do all these things for the local community community and then charge somebody to walk out holding the hand of their hero you know shove a shirt on their back usher them out um you know, back up into the stands, give them a cheese sandwich and uh, and say thank you very much. Uh, we'll, that's £700, please. The club don't need it. I take what you're saying. That was an eye-opener for me. That um, Whatever you... What did you just say? Half a half a million quid? So the, the Premier League together, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the Premier League together. So half a million quid, 500 grand. So what you're saying is if, if it's 20%, then West Ham are making 100 grand a year. I mean, firstly... That's quite impressive. That's a quite impressive amount uh, to bring in if you're looking at it purely as a business. But it's also a damn right wrong thing to do because they get 190 million a year. They don't need it. They don't need the 100 grand. They really don't. I, why can't I just pay for it out of players' fines? I'm sure the players get fined for lateness and, and things like that. There's any number of things that they could do, Gio. And, and, I, and I think it's an absolute disgrace. And let's be fair, this article might have come out today. But we saw this article last year. It's yeah. it's, it's not changed. I yeah, don't think the um, I, oh, they've had bad press for this before. That's, the bad press is not gonna not gonna stop them. Such tight fisted penny pinching is disgraceful. Yeah, I don't mind them charging. I think how how if you were, they're all to be free, how do you then divvy them up? How do you choose who gets to be the mascot and stuff? So I do I do I don't mind that there being a fee, but I think seven hundred pounds is a bit excessive. Well, I say a bit, it's very excessive because. A mascot should be a once in a lifetime experience. So if you're going to get your kids something for Christmas or their birthday, a mascot package should could very well be that present. You get to be the mascot at your boyhood club. Um, but seven hundred pounds pricing a lot of people out completely. You just never be able. You, especially if your son or daughter come home and says, "I would like to be a mascot for Christmas, please." You're thinking, "I'm about what chance am I spending seven hundred pounds on that?" And you've got two kids. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow, well, that's not happening, is it? So I think I think there should, should be. Do you know? Do you know the thing I wouldn't mind them doing is if they tiered it in such a way or something that it's X pounds. But after three years of a season ticket holder, it's half price. After seven years of a season ticket holder, well, bear in mind you have to you have to be careful with their ages, don't you? Because seven years means that, like, because you can only be a mascot <laughs> to the age of fourteen. So, you're, like, you're, a, you're a messy bloke, all right, Sebastian. Hold your hand, please. Son, will walk out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you gotta be a bit careful. You gotta watch the ages. So you don't tear it, all right? But there's a, I think there's a way you can tear it so you reward loyalty to the child because essentially. They're putting money into the club. Well, the parents put money into the club every single year. Season ticket holders, um, so I think you should get money off as a mascot or something. I, I do think there's a way of doing it to reward loyalty, but um, but a lot of clubs do do it for free. Um, it's just I don't know. It's another thing to hit the the board with at the minute, but it's just it's nothing new. And what's worse is this has come up and embarrassed them already, and they've just turned a blind eye to it. So this will let it blow over eventually. We'll just keep charging the money we're charging and stuff. Um, I, I think they'll change it now, given everything that's going on. I do think this will get reviewed immediately, and um, no doubt it'll get reduced, and the OSB will be given credit. Whereas I think it should be, to be quite honest with you, Amelia that's given credit because to to make an account and call out Karen Brady on social media. Fair play to you. That's the type of person we want on, whether it's the junior supporters board or the official supporters board, that's the type of person we want on there. Someone that is willing to gamble, I guess. And say, well, you know what? Sacrifice their own position, yeah, Gio, it's, it's, as well. It's, it's, not, not, not to, exactly what we were talking about the last cup of tea. Not to, not yeah. to let your, 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 your sense of self-importance get in the way for, for the betterment. She's done the right thing and... and and you know what? And actually, because you've done the right thing, Brady was forced to turn around then and say, don't worry, we, we, we won't get rid of you. Well, you couldn't have done, because I tell you what, yeah, you go you go and kick a kid off the junior supporters board, see how that goes for you, yeah. <laughs> and uh, credit, credit to Amelia's parents, because I, I don't know who they are, I've never spoken to them or that, but I can only imagine that they obviously encouraged uh, this Twitter account and whatever, and I think it's the right thing to do. But this is what we need. This is what we need. The people that are in these positions to hold the club to account sent one email, sent two emails, right, I've had no reply, that's it. You know, you've had your chances now. Um, I think she was fair. Well done. So, mascot price is soon to be slashed, I imagine. Um, David Gold did uh, last week, 
that that was interesting, wasn't it? The Thursday night, I think it was. Late well, th- I'm scared of the fans and all that. Yeah, late Thursday night, we've seen the back pages of two um, mainstream newspapers, and it was I Fear Our Fans by David Gold. Um, what did you make of that? Well, I'm, I'm sick, of the, sick of the sound of him, quite frankly, at the moment. He needs to, he needs to take a, a step back. I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. I... I I don't understand what he's doing. A man, let's be fair, I look at him and he doesn't seem well. He does not look well a lot of the time. I, a man of his, of his vintage with that much money, he, he, look, apparently he's got lovely gardens at his house and, 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 a, and a carp pond. And, I mean, he really shouldn't be getting involved in this stuff. He should be um, he should be enjoying some retirement is, is what I would advise um, for David Gold, quite frankly. Um, I think it was a... Um, and it was a cunning ploy. I think it was a. Um, I thought it was done with intent. I think the article was planned, and I think the article was planned as a as a series of landmines. Because what he's doing is he's preparing for if there's trouble on the 29th, and that's what he's doing now. Amers United are planning a, a peaceful protest. Everything has been done so well. They've they've met with the. LLDC, they've met with a Metropolitan Police. They are doing everything by the book. But that being said, I can't remember whether it was the West Brom game or the one before someone tried to run on the pitch. Um, I can't remember which game it was. You can't you can't rule out that somebody that's not affiliated with Hammers United is going to do something silly. And at that point, David Gold has already laid the landmines and it's just you've got to hope nobody treads on one. Now, I do... Um, I have some sympathy with David Gold over the way he was confronted outside his car whenever it was a couple of seasons ago. Okay, I I don't think that was a good look. I don't think it does the fans any favours whatsoever because and I do think he's being a conniving old what's it at the moment, by the way. I I, I really do. I really think he's playing the game. And I think there's a, you know, um, he knows what he's doing with that. That being said, it's not he is an old man and he does look in poor health and it is not a good look for a bunch of middle-aged or, or blokes in their 20s to be confronting an old man i don't care what anyone says because that's all those people like jim white need is a little bit a little bit of ammunition like that to to really go because at the moment you've got the media are starting to side with the west ham fans so our behavior at the moment is is under the microscope at the moment the board are the bad guys and at the moment, in the me- it's taken a long time to get to this. In the media's opinion, the fans are the good guys now. It is going to take next to nothing to shift that over. And I just feel that that's what that article um, was was all about. I don't doubt he was intimidated outside the car that time. I, I don't. I don't doubt that. I also remember when David Sullivan was he was approached in a car park, wasn't he after after a game? Um, again, I didn't. The thing is, everybody's got a camera with them now and, and, and it gets filmed and it possibly looked worse than it actually was. But it's not a good look. We mustn't fall into that trap that's being set. Yeah, I think I actually think he's coming out of this bad. David Gold, really bad. I think he's played the bumbling fool for the last few years since we've moved in. He, he has, though, hasn't he? He's almost tried to play the silly uncle kind of routine that everybody gets a lot of people gave him a bit of a pass and said ah it's just dave gold he's not got a clue what's going on well he's exposing himself actually he's very much actually painting a target on his back and i don't know if he's doing it on purpose to try and take the pressure off sullivan and brady or if he's just daft like because it's one of the two, um, and I th- I'm, I'm thinking it's a latter. I think he's just daft. I think he's completely misread the situation. I think in that said article, he says he said about how he was in the cab the day before for half an hour, and the taxi driver was a West Ham fan and loved the London Stadium. But he literally says in the same article about how he fears the fans. He literally says, "But everyone I know likes the stadium. So why do you fear the fans? If everyone you speak to is happy." then why are you worried about anything? You shouldn't be worried about anything. So I just thought, oh, come on, Dave, just give it up. Just stop this. Just stop. You know, he, he did his whole, oh, I grew up in Green Street in poverty. We know, Dave. You tell us every two months, every time you do an interview, you slip it in. Um, I think he should just stop. I think he just needs to shut his mouth 
and just stop. And this goes back to what I said last week when Cam Robson got banned for inciting crowd unrest. David Gold's article is more likely to incite unrest than Cam Robson's t-shirt on the football pitch. So, you know, this is is where I just get frustrated a little bit because I think you're just making matters worse. You're not helping anyone. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the fans. You're not helping the media. Um, They're just getting pelters from all angles at the minute. All they're doing is digging a hole. And... Well, they're going to keep on digging it, I think, uh, especially when the Southampton game's on the horizon uh, that week, in a couple of weeks' time. I'd imagine they're all going to come out in their media again, like we saw oh, yeah. prior to the, the last game. So it's not the last we've heard, but he just needs to quit, David Gold, just shoosh. Um, however, Sunday, possibly the best article you'll read this year, maybe, Oliver Holt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, most sarcastic was, apology ever. Yeah, it, it, it was it was wonderfully sarcastic. But I just, um, I, I mean, it's if I, I, it was something that not, not I couldn't write like that. I can't. I can barely write my own name, of course. But it was something I basically wanted to do in a video by apologising and you know, like to apologise for saying that the seats are a mile away from the stand. You know, when of course you can only just just about get a cruise liner um, uh, between you know between the stand and the pitch, that, that sort of thing. So I I, it, I thought it was. It was the it obvious. Come to that, I've got another open letter here from uh, West Ham United. Well, there you there, there you go. So I, I do think it was, um, you know, you you, you could. It, it, they always left themselves open for that level of sarcasm, um, and that's that's the trouble when you um, when you try and shut anything down. It's sort of like it's, it's a bit like on the on the terraces where they try and shut down a chant that you really shouldn't be singing. The fans just start humming it, and 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 this is this is the thing. So if what you want to, you can't shut down the press from having a criticism of of the board because all the press will do is is circumvent it in some way, and and in in which case, you know, he's going to dress it up as an apology and then stick the boot in anyway, um, because believe it or not, they're not the smartest people in the world, and uh, and probably somebody that studied. Uh, the written word all their lives is probably a, a, a little bit sharper um, at using words than um, than Golden Sullivan. So, yeah, uh, fair play to him. It was always coming, though, Gio, and, and I think there's there's even more of it to come, quite frankly. Do you know what I liked about it the most? It was fun. Mm. I've, I've got a bit, not fed up, but some of these articles I find are quite repetitive. Says us sitting here doing a, a cup of tea, repeating what we've ever said before. But anyway, um, I find it almost like the, the journalists are just copying each other now. It's a bandwagon thing. I think they're all just jumping on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm sitting thinking, well, where were you a year ago? Where were you two years ago? You know, you weren't coming out with all those opinions, but now your opinions about the London Stadium, well, this was valid a year ago two years ago since we moved in essentially all this criticism you have of it has existed since day one so you're jumping on the bad wagon but Holt's one I just thought it was fun I actually read it with a smile I took it for what it was meant it was a bit of fun but it had a serious undertone to it oh, as yeah. well it was very much serious but I just thought the way he'd done it was fantastic um, it was really really good one of the best articles I've read in a long time actually and I enjoyed reading it um, last thing we're going to talk about before we move on to the live questions is results have got went for us this weekend, Gons. I don't know if you're watching the Premier League, but it's it's got to the point of the season now. I'm starting to look at what every other team's doing around us, and not only look, worry. Um, you know, we got a bit of a you know Brighton played Watford on Saturday afternoon. I was thinking, what what do we actually need here? What result do we need? Do we need Brighton to win because looking at the fixtures, it's more likely to be Watford that come into the bottom three, or do we need a draw just to keep them both in there? Do we need Watford, the team with momentum, to win against a team that's out of form in Brighton? So I thought, what on earth do we need? And finished one one. I thought, all right, looking at the table, that is probably the best thing for us here. Then Sunday. Bournemouth looked good against Sheffield United for 10-15 minutes. I thought, this isn't good. Ban, they got the goal. Oh, no, this is not right. This is not right. Please don't, Sheffield United. Please do not be, like, on the beach. Now you're safe from relegation. It's a case of, oh, well, we can just drift. I thought, oh, here we go. They got their equaliser and then they got their winner. 
83rd minute, I, f- I found myself celebrating. Going, so when they got that winner, I genuinely sat there going, get in. You know, and it's got to this point. It's bad. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I've got to be honest with you. I don't think I've looked at the league table for three or four weeks. Don't. Uh, no, no. Well, I, I know what's there because people talk about it all the time. Um, I went out on the on the razzle dazzle on Saturday, so I didn't see any. But obviously, you you know you check your phone every now and every now and again, and you, you see the results come through, of course. Um, but I've not even watched them. I, I've not watched. Uh, there were so few games. Did I guess they still did have a match of the day, did they? But um, couldn't have been a very couldn't have been a very long one if they did. Uh, but then again, I, I'd sort of almost forgotten that we were in the um, in the midst of this winter break. So I remember. I, I do um, not to the same level or standard as yourself, but I, I tend to, on a Friday night, um, flick open my betting app and have a, have a cheeky bet. And I try and predict every, well, not every result, not just every result, every scoreline of the of the Premier League fixtures that weekend. One day it might happen, I'll be a rich man. Anyway, um, I thought, hold on, where's all my fixtures? And then I remember that it was a winter break. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Look, we're going to need some luck along the way, Gio. We, we're going to need to a certain aspects of putting our own fate in our own hands. Yes, we're going to need some of that. I think we possibly might do ourselves a lot of favours if we try and take a cheeky draw from an unexpected game. Yes, but we also do need some other teams to be really crap as well. And I do think our best chance of survival is hoping to find three teams that are more crap than we are rather than any sort of brilliance that David Moyes and the crew can conjure up. Do, do, you, want, do you want to know the bad news, though? On no, Sunday. not really. Not if it's bad, no. All right, then. Well, uh, we'll just move on to the... Uh, no, I'm going to tell you anyway. On Sunday, you're going to have to support Spurs. They're playing Why? Villa. Yeah, they're up against Villa, I'm afraid. You're going to have to root for Spurs for 90 minutes. I won't. I won't. I only. I won't even know that the game is going on. I'll go and do right. something else, and then I will hope that my phone informs me that um, that Tottenham have beaten Aston Villa. I, I cannot. I can't watch the game and support Tottenham. Crikey! Can you imagine? Yeah. Well, um, that's what I'm going to have to do. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to sit there secretly hoping the Spurs win. Um, it's got to that point. Um, people in the live chat, get your questions in. I've got some on Twitter that I'm trying to flip my phone over to because it's on the floor charging. Um, get your questions in the live chat. Are you I'm using re- your toe to read your the Twitter questions on your phone? No, it's, it's, my phone's connected to the charger, which is on the floor. So I'm trying to drag the phone across the carpet. So I just, just, just so I don't duck down out of the camera. Duck down. Go and get it. Gio, where are you gone? Yeah, 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 very good. Um, anyway, right. So here we go. Well, first of all, while I get this ready, uh, Gonzo, that's a nice mug you've got there. Oh, hold on. Can you see it? It's a next level mug. A world world class tea in a world class mug. The Hammers Chat mugs. There we go. Guess where you can get them? I don't know. Where can you get them? On the Aston Villa channel. No. <laughs> you can get them from us. You tell us where you can get them. I'll tell you what. Your tea does taste even better in this mug. And what I've noticed with this particular mug, it's got a very large handle. Did you notice that, Geo? The handle is larger than the rest of my mugs. I don't know. I didn't compare. Well, you should do. What? Compare sizes? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. It's got the old Prince Charles but handle mate, on this one. But if I compare sizes with other things, with other people, they might get offended. Well, I don't know. Well, they won't know. They don't have to know. Just do it when they're asleep. But, um, yes, so where, where, where can where can people get this fine... Email us. Email us, hammerschat at gmail.com. The link is... Uh, the link? The email address is in the description. Email us just saying you want a mug and I will reply with the, the procedure and stuff and uh, we will get sent out to you. I've been to the post office the last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday and today, Tuesday. The last five days I've been down to that post office. They're sick of the sight of me and I've got to go tomorrow and I think I'm going to have to go Thursday as well. So thank you everybody for that's purchased a mug so far. I hope the ones I've got it, to be, I say I hope you liked it. We've only had good messages about it so I'm going to assume yeah, that everybody and, and likes it. And if you it. didn't like it, it's too late because you've already bought it. Yeah, it's quite like that. No refunds. Only the so. best customer service at Hammers Chat. Um, right, um, Dave G. Hammer, what's your thoughts on Lomas and Gale saying we shouldn't protest because it's affecting the team? Good question, Dave. I forgot about that. 
Um, I think it's quite brave of them to come out and say it, really, because they must know that it would go against um, what a large number of the fans uh, will think. You've also you've got to remember that there are a, a number of fans that don't think we should be protesting. So you've almost got three layers. So you've got a number of fans that would like to protest. There are a number of fans that still want the board out but don't think we should protest. And then you've got a, a, a small number of fans who don't think we should protest and are very happy with the board. Um I, I understand. I, I really do understand what they're saying, by the way, because you don't want it to impact the team at all. However, I do think everything has been done to keep it as far away from the players as is possible. And, and there's clear instruction to not let it not let it filter in or not let it filter onto the pitch or affect the team or that or that type of thing. I think what's everybody's looking back what happened against Burnley now, and I think now, whenever anybody speaks about West Ham and protests or, or whatever the case may be. I'm sure Lomas and Tony Gale are both, have both got Burnley in mind. Does anybody want anything like that to happen? No, no, of course, because I, I tell you now, anything goes on in that stadium like that, we will lose the game. And there is no doubt about it whatsoever. You might, honestly, you might as well just, you might as well just give the other team three points. So it, it's got to be done properly and it's got to be done outside. But that's why people have got to follow. If you're going to, if you're going to protest, you've got to follow Hammers United's, instructions to the letter really and, and and go with it and then and then go in and sing for the team and support the team simple as that yeah the, the, the supporting the team is crucial especially now we're down the bottom of the table as well they do need our support as for Lomas and Gale I don't want to say they're uneducated but perhaps they assume wrongly that the protest is going to continue inside the ground mm. or something I don't know I don't know if they know the full details because well you see lots of stuff saying that West Ham fans are protesting, I've hardly seen any articles that say what the protest is. I've hardly seen any articles that make it clear that we are not protesting inside the ground. Because why would they put that in? It doesn't sound as good, does it? It doesn't sound good that we're protesting outside and then going in and supporting the team. That's like, whoa, that's not a headline, is it? Christ almighty, I'd rather people we made on the fans are going to be going in and kicking off and whatever. Um, so I, I just think they they don't know enough. I don't know, think they know the full story. And I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, actually, because they've been asked for a soundbite and they've given a soundbite. It's it's neither here nor there for me. Um, Ray's asking what's in the letter. Uh, to, to be clear, I made that up. I don't actually have a letter from West Ham now. I, I want to make that clear, but especially with everything going on. And, and it's, we might as well say while we're here, we've never been asked to take anything down by the club. Um, we, we got asked once, what, four years ago, and that's because you put through a job of Upton Park and you got told to take it down because... Well, yeah, but there was a, some more sinister things. That's a, you know, quite, there's a hell of a story behind that. Yeah, yeah but yeah, that yeah. wasn't... And to be fair, that wasn't the media team. That wasn't like... No, and, no, no, and no. It wasn't the current... The media team's changed since, but it wasn't even the media no. team back then. The, 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 the West Ham have never asked us to take any videos down or anything like that, um, to be clear, because a couple of people have asked me we'd be asked to say not say things or that but nah I don't think they care enough to be honest with you we're small fry um, a few thousand people watching this video is nothing compared to someone reading the back pages of the mirror or millions tuning into Sky Sports that's their that that's their worry um, I'm just trying to read the questions as they come in uh, Gary Smithhurst asked a good one he said what, what do we have to look forward to next season if we stay up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you, um, were, you were expecting if we go down, weren't you? Well, well I just if we stay up. I, I, was, I, was, I was expecting the question to, to end there from Gary. Gary, I, I just think we've got so... There's so much doom and gloom. I'll tell you what we've got to look forward to. We've got, we've got relief to look forward to. If we stay up, there will be a huge sigh of relief. Then what you've got to look forward to is um, everybody promising that everything will be better. And um, that there'll be, a, you might have a load of next level stuff um, being promised. No, no, I, 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 I jest. You, you might even get to look forward to new ownership if we stay up. There's, um, there's something for you. Um, I do think relief's a big one though, because I maintain for a long time that that, that the stadium is is going to be a complete hindrance in the championship. I really do. I think we, we pretty much have surrendered home advantage by moving there. So um, I think there's a lot to look forward to by staying up, Gary, in all honesty, mate. 
Right, I'll go along with the new owner things. I think it's possible if we stay up. Um, to be honest with you, I'll, I'll, I'll look forward to Cups. I, I will. I will still look forward to the Cups next season if we stay up. Out of hope more than faith. Um, but that's my hope every thing. And I'm not... I'm almost just going to refuse to let anyone take that away from me because what have I got to look forward to if I can't look forward to having a run at the League Cup or the FA Cup? So as a football fan, not just a West Ham fan, but as a football fan, and I speak to every football fan watching this, you should have hope. You should have a desire to win a cup. And and if that gets taken away, then what's the point? You know, honestly, what is the point anymore? So that's that would be that would be for me. And uh, this is a really good question from Dave Middlech. What do you reckon the percentage of fans in the stadium want Gold, Sullivan and Brady out if you had to put a number on it? In the stadium? Yeah, he did say that in his question. You might be surprised, actually, on that. You might well find in the stadium it's it's 50% or something like that. I I I I certainly don't think there's a massive majority inside that stadium. I, I, I genuinely was going to go lower than that. I was going to say about 30%. Mm. Um, I, I do. I think there's there's too many people in there that either A, don't support West Ham, or B, only follow West Ham on a Saturday. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that. That's what they do. Mm. That's what they do. But the Monday to Friday stuff, all this David Gold interviews and that, they don't care about it. They're not bothered by it. They just want to turn up and watch a bit of football. doesn't mean they don't support West Ham. They just don't live and breathe West Ham per se Um, we're obsessed with it I'm obsessed with it you're obsessed with it and if you're watching this bear in mind we are 41 minutes into the video you're obsessed with West Ham as well (laughs) you are (laughs) the the, the, the paradox in what you've just said though and what you know maybe we, we both agree on that it's not a majority is that the people that probably hate Golden Sullivan and Brady are probably the ones that would remain in that stadium if we got um put down to the championship Actually, the ones they think are their allies, the ones that the board think are their new fans, would probably be the first ones to um, uh, Foxtrot Oscar. Basically. Yeah, yeah I, quite, I quite agree. Now, I'm going to turn to the Twitter questions um, because I don't want to miss them. And then if we've got time, we'll come back to the live chat. Um, so keep your live chat questions for now. Right, um, here we go. So Dean was asking about this. Oh, here we go. James Gunn. Geo, what type of crisp is David Moyes? Gonzo, what type of biscuit is David Moyes? Okay, I, I saw question. this question. I like this. I saw it early. I don't normally see the questions Cheat. before, but I was. Um, well, I don't, I don't normally. I'm not really on, but I, I found myself with a, with an hour or two spare today, and uh, I was sat on the um, sat on the laptop, not not literally, obviously. And I saw James's question, and and, and initially. I was trying to think of something quite clever, so a, an older biscuit. I was, I was thinking of Garibaldi or something like that. But then I realised it was it was none of those. And actually, it doesn't matter which biscuit it is. Because all I want you to do is imagine that Christmas selection box that you've got. So you open it up. It might be the Fox's box. You might have the Viennese cream goes. You might have the chocolate fingers goes. But at the end of every selection box, it might be... And again, everyone's different, but there, there will be one biscuit that's left. There'll be a whole stack of them. All the others will go, and there'll still be a stack of shortcake. three of these. Whatever, dark chocolate shortcake. For you, it's a shortcake, whatever. If it's a box of chocolates, it might be the coffee chocolate. If it's a box of celebrations or whatever, it might be the bounties. Whatever the case may be, there's always something in every assortment box that's left at the end. And that's the biscuit that David Moyes is, basically, I'm afraid to say. He's the, he's, he's the last big biscuit in a box that is only ever going to get chosen once everything else is gone and you're absolutely starving. Well, mine is supermarkets, own brand, ready salted, cheap, nasty, boring. That's the David Moyes crisp, and I'm not going to budge from that one at all. Um, Irish Tommy, do you think the board will stick with Moyes until the end of the season, no matter what? Yes, 100%. They will not change. Yeah, I, I completely agree. They, they, what are they going to do? They, they struggle to get Moyes in. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he's, he's the last biscuit in the box, Gio. There's no more biscuits in the box, mate. The, the, the only thing worse, as a, a chairman of the football club, the only thing worse is than going for like the last choice 
is there's no one after him. <laughs> like, what would you do? I would have to. Be, they'd probably have to promote Kevin Nolan, which I'm not against because I'm just sick of David Boyce. Truth be told, I, I'm really, I'm just not happy with him. Um, um, Nicola A Bubble says one hopes when new players come in it improves the mechanics of the team and it also has a positive effect by like giving existing players a new lease of life. However, the current trend seems to be we buy a supposedly good player and they get worse the longer they are with us. Why? That's a very uh, that's that's far more detailed than our usual questions, Gia. Um to paraphrase, why do we make players crap? Um if I may pretty much. Um I think everything absolutely everything if you put together the whole combination of the stadium the training ground the board the lack of coaches i see no reason to believe that we that we, that we we've already ascertained that we have got a skeleton staff on pretty much every department i'm sure the physio staff the medical medical department say if you Look, if you put cheap oil and crap fuel and the worst tyres on a car, and, and, and if you basically treat it, treat that, it's going to break down and it's not going to work. And I just think we do not treat our players well. I don't know. I can only speculate. I, is there is there one thing that's wrong? I, I, I suggest probably not. I'd imagine everything, everything, gradually, as a detrimental effect. To, to just give more things than Gonzo said, rather than repeating Gonzo, what I will say, changing managers. Because how can a manager that was purchased by Pellegrini, how can that suit David Moyes? How can a manager that was signed by Slavin Bilic suit Pellegrini? And so on, you get my point. But when you change a manager, which we are doing on average every 18 months at the minute, how is that going to... It's just not going to help. A manager needs to build a squad. He needs to build a team. Now... While I'm harsh on Moyes, this is one thing he's never, he's not been able to do at West Ham United, which is build his own side. I do think he's partly responsible for that in terms of the fact he dithers in the transfer market and he takes too long to identify players. But he's not had a summer transfer window yet. Okay, he's not had a real good go at it. So I will give him the benefit of the doubt in that instance. But you cannot just keep the thing is when you say that, I know immediately you're thinking Sebastian Allaire, but. If you to to quickly run through the team really quickly, Fabianski, I would argue he's improved. Fredericks, I would argue we got what we paid for, or didn't pay for rather, which was a free championship <laughs> right back. Um, Zabaleta, we got we got a free old right back. That's what he is. Balbuena, surely he's improved to an extent because we bought him for four million. Diop, in his first season, he improved. He's gone backwards this season, but. Maybe we're just not buying good enough players and then the injuries thing's coming in as well. I don't think it's anything... I actually think the answers are a lot more obvious than it appears to be, to be honest with you. I don't think there's any, like, formula behind it. I think it's just pure basics and we're getting the basics wrong. Um, Mark, why have the five players got five days holidays when we're in the relegation zone? Um, we've sort of discussed that. He asked when the polo shirts will be ready. Um... We're working on that, aren't we? We're close. Yeah. I, We're I was close. meant to. I was meant to wear. I was hoping you would. I was hoping you would. I saw. I, I, I was. I was in such a hurry, and then I've got to be honest. Here, it's absolutely freezing. Not. Not in here now, but I just didn't fancy running down the garden. Um, I did, yeah, pretty much. Um, I'll take. I'll take that. But we'll. we'll, we'll um, We'll have a look at the polo shirts. We'll, we'll show them off a little bit. What we've got to do with the polo shirts, we've got to take because they're quite. Um, that we ain't got bundles of of cash sat here to, to purchase a load of stocks. What we need to do is we need, what we can't do is, is buy them up and get a load of the sizes wrong. So we need to work out who wants what in what size, then, then order them. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're, and, we're, 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 we're working on it, but they are lovely polo shirts. And we've had to test them. So I've washed mine twice to make mm. sure that when you wash them, nothing's going to happen to them. They're not going to shrink the th thread and the embroidery is not going to come out of that. They've passed a two wash test. So we're quite confident we've got the good shirts. Um, Steve Dan, I'm concerned the protests against Gold Sullivan and Brady as we approach the vital games may work against um, on the pitch. While I'm 100% behind the message, any hostility in the ground will work against us. What's your thoughts on waiting for the last game or until we are safe to protest? So a slight twist on the Tony Gale thing. Um, well, I, 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 my argument with that would be I don't think we are going to be safe. So there possibly wouldn't be a time uh, to protest. I also think uh, that that's 
that's what they're banking on. But I mean, you're right to be concerned because, as I say, it could take anyone can derail this. Anyone can derail this. This can go wrong very, very easily. That's why you, you know, that's why it's all got to be done right and it's all got to be done um, properly. But that they are desperate for this protest not to happen. They really are. And the thing is, what you got to remember is, you won't get it at the last game. So if you're looking at it after that, you're looking at it after the season's finished. Well, all, everybody's not up in Stratford after the season's finished, and also it wouldn't get much press coverage either. I think I think there'll be a massive one at the last game if we're already down or if we've already stayed up. Oh, yeah. As yeah. long as Villa's not a decider, I think it'll be a monster protest because there's nothing to lose then, especially if we're already down. If we're down before we kick off against Villa, I think, I, I think you'll see the almighty protest that day because we're down the only the only thing i hope for and i will say this if we have stayed up if we have guaranteed safety before we kick off against villa i want to see no protests because if something spills onto the pitch there's nothing stopping the fa taking a points deduction off us which could relegate us essentially so it's <laughs> that could that would be the worst thing in the world if we were to get a three point deduction which actually puts us 18th in the league down into the championship we go because 10 people ran on the pitch during the game with our GSB out banner I would just say behave yourself um, on the last day well do your protest outside but do not take it in but you're already down hell for leather is what I would suggest and um, we've got a good question in the live chat so I'm going to skip that for a go back which was um, DJ Blokey says which player do you think turns up first for training and who do you think turns up last? Um, I would... Okay, well, the easiest one. It's it going to be such cliched answers, of course. I think... Um, <laughs> I, I think Antonio turns up first, and Arthur Masterwark, who turns up last. I think Zabalata's first. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And I think... Who's a lazy stone, so... See, I don't know. It's usually the Joker's last. I'm gonna say Snodgrass is last. It's the jokey one tends to be the the last one, doesn't it? Because you can get away with it. Because if you're popular with the players and the manager, you can bend the rules a little bit. But if you're not very well liked, and you turn up late, you're in trouble. Um, you're in the bad books. And um, Jazza, which player would you trust least to cut your hair? Well, Roberto, for goodness sake, he'd probably drop me head. Um, yeah, maybe. I, I would say Masuaku, he can't deliver anything. Um, Anto Antonio, the scissors would go... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, um, Thomas Longergan says, if you could swap grounds with any Premier League club, which one would you take? <laughs> Um, Chelsea, forty three thousand, close to the pitch. It's about right for us. I'll say Anfield. Um, back to Twitter. Uh, Phil Phil Trot says long overdue. Miss you, buggers. Have an intelligent debate. Oh, don't know. I think he's got the wrong channel there. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, Martin Hillman says, do you think it would be a good idea signing Sacco? Uh, as he's currently a free agent and would give us another option up front. Ah, he's mental. Yeah, I don't, I don't want him either. The worst thing is Martin's actually tagged Sacco on Twitter. Oh, whoops. No, I'm not in this. He, I, yeah, I don't want him to hear me say that. No, on Twitter. So thankfully no one's replied going, no, piss off. <laughs> so Sacco can't he's, men it. he's mental. I was meant to rogue you like that. Yeah, lovely fella. Um, Dave G. Hammer in the live chat says, which loan player do you keep an eye on the most? For him, it's Josh Cullen. Oh, uh, Holland, uh, yeah, uh, now because he's gone out. I mean, I hadn't done before because he wasn't on loan. Um, it, it had been, it had been Dian Garner. No, I, 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 I it's, I'm so used to Josh Cullen being out on. <laughs> he's been out on loan all his, uh, all his adult life, really, hasn't he? So, um, so no, I, I haven't done. But really interested in, uh, in how Holland's getting on. But I know I'm a bit of a scratch record of him, and I so. Um, Ricky Allen, on average. What do you think the actual home attendance is? I like it, actual home attendance. 53. That thousand, obviously. I don't think we're that, we're that poorly supported. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say 
a bit less than that. I'll say about 49,000 because I still remember that BBC article that said there was 12,000 not turning up every game on average in the first season. And it's got worse since then. Um, so I think it's gone down from that. Um, how does it... No, this is an interesting one. Okay. West Ham Irons. How does it make you feel now when you revisit the first videos of your wide eye enthusiastic trips to the new stadium? Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I almost wanted to delete them the other day, actually. It's funny you should say that. hate it. So much. Um, can't stand it. Can't stand a bloke in a me, by the way. Um, oh, happy. Um, yeah, is it wide-eyed and enthusiastic? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm gutted. I'm gutted, really. Ashamed of myself, quite frankly, that I got hoodwinked into it and, and uh, thought it was a good idea. And then, Actually, one of those videos, right? It's one of those videos, and it was the Newham Rum. Um, and I'll never forget this. <laughs> Neither will I, I. I went in to do and run. And I'm down there. I was with my son. Um, loved, loved a lovely, lovely day out. And uh, took him down there. And I'm at the front. And I'm saying, now, what's going to happen is these seats are going to be moved. I'm at the front of the stands. I'm at right, right, right row A or whatever. I'm saying, these seats are going to be moved right up closer to the pitch. Did the video. Uploaded it. Uh, it was a popular video, to be fair. Got whatever. Got loads of views. And um, in the comments underneath, somebody said to me, Oh, Gons, I think that's as far as the seats are going forward. I said, no, 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 they're not. And someone else piped up. You read the comments on there. And someone else said, no, no, I'm pretty sure. And that was when I had the first inkling, because then I started having a look. And then I realised quite shortly after that that was it. That was as close as the seats were going to get. But actually, even I think my first few comments were refusing to believe it. I was saying, no, yeah. no, 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 they're, they're going closer. They're, they're definitely going closer because we've been told, we've been told they're going closer. So, yeah, at that point, I was still 100% believed what I'd been told. Um, but I am, I'm a bit, I'm a bit gullible. Like when people say we're going to sign a goalkeeper, you know, and stuff like that, I can be quite gullible. Um, I am not too bad. But it came back to me yesterday, actually, because that, the Reservation Centre video did the rounds on Twitter yesterday, didn't mm. it? Do you know what we saw when we went in with uh, Ray Winston's yeah. voiceover? Because yeah. we used to mock it quite a lot, didn't it's we? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Mother, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, brothers, cousins, cousins <laughs> brothers, second cousins, pets, dogs, people you might know. Everyone's come. Yeah, yeah, no, good video. Um, good video. It looked good. I was, hey, come on. I was right up for a bit of that. Look good, yeah. and but you start scratching it, and you can actually see, can't you? Because you the pitch ends, and even then in that video, you can they're being a little bit they're stretching the truth a little bit, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, but you just, you just didn't notice wrong. it. You just didn't notice no, it. Actually, now you look back, you think there is yeah. a bit of a gap yeah. here, actually, isn't there? there? Is a little bit of a mm. gap. Um, but there were, we, we, I watched it back, and the funny thing is, because the stadium, I didn't want to. Uh, leave i didn't want to move to london stadium until i went to the reservation center that sucked me in because we went in there because we had a day at upton park where it was quite me and gonzo are very unique on this day because we were in upton park um mm. for the day and then Fil we went, Fil filming we, we, we were filming yeah. we, we, got, we had access to the whole stadium for the day yeah so then with, with sky sports as well we had sky sports along for a couple of interviews and that they were out to the reservation center Sat there, watched the video, whatever. We were we were day one of the new season ticket holders, so we 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 weren't seeing to go to Upton Park. But I I signed up as soon as you could join the waiting list. I joined the waiting list kind of thing. So I, I got day one, and you were you had that plus two thing. So I took Gonzo along and said, right, come on then, let's go. So I went in, and we had to haggle about our seats because we wanted a seat, and the guys said, oh, we're not really selling that block. So I remember you were like, no, no, no. Yeah, because yeah, they thought that block was going to be right next to the away fans. Yeah. And we so, said, we don't care. We want to be next to the away <laughs> we fans. Said, That's why we want them, mate. Go get them. He says, well, if you buy that seat, if there's an FA Cup game, you're not going to be able to sit in your seat. We said, that's fine. Well, I uh, take that as a compromise. Turned out the away fans were the other side they stand. But, uh, but yeah, so we got that and we walked down. And that's when I got I got suckered in then. And then I wasn't at the Domzali game, but I went to the Juventus game. And you weren't up at one. No, no. I remember saying to you, like, it feels like I'm an HD, but I remember saying to you, it's a bit, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. Then as time went on, weeks weeks went by, I just, I just didn't like it. I just did not like it at all. Um, I, st I still don't. I just don't bang on about it. I hate people banging on about it. 
because I am one of them. Uh, I don't like it. I've just got used to it. I'm now used to it. I don't notice a trampoline anymore. I don't notice a scaffold. I mean, the last home game, we were sitting there, the Brighton game, and someone came and sat next to us. There was, there was a seat <laughs> unused for the whole first half. So one of our fans came and sat next to us. And he says, I've never seen the scaffolding before. And we said, yeah, there it is. So he was like looking over because he's only ever sat in the lower tier or in the middle of the Billy Bond stand or whatever. So he's never sat directly behind the upper tier where you can actually see the scaffolding exposed. He was quite uh, shocked <laughs> by it. But I'm, I'm completely oblivious to that now. All the, the faults and whatever. I just don't notice it. Uh, so anyway, back to the, the, the questions there. Um, someone asking why we start supporting West Ham or dads really. We didn't really have an option, unfortunately. Um, Phil Trott's asking what our perfect staff would be for next season. Christ, I don't know. We don't know enough um, staff. He's, he's um, nominating Parker and all that. But yeah, this is people that we don't know. Uh, um, t- Tony Coffey. I don't know if that's his... Uh, I'm going to assume that's not his real name. It's a play on words. Good play. Um, my son's driving me bad to take him to the next home game. But at the moment, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Am I being paranoid? I can't believe as a West Ham fan, I even have to ask such a question. That's yeah, sad. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You, you'll you'll be absolutely fine. I, I've taken um, my kids down uh, so many times. I understand that you know there's going to be a protest, but it is. I mean, I, I can only I can only say this, you know, so many times. It's really being organised really really well. A lot of people that are um, involved in Hammers United, they're they're all fathers um, and mothers, and and a lot of the kids are going with them as well. So it's it's just not that type of thing. You've got you're gonna have more trouble there when when we play a, a sort of tasty away team, if you know what I mean. It's um, I, w- I wouldn't I wouldn't worry, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I, in fact, I think things were worse. Bear, bear in mind at the start, if you remember, I mean that Watford game, and then the people were just fight fights were breaking out when we first got there, and you weren't allowed to stand up. The stewards were making it worse. They were making everyone sit down, and 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 fights were breaking out amongst fans all around us. That was that was that was nasty. I did. I remember my wife was saying to me then, you know, you can't you can't take the kids uh, for a little bit. Um, uh, so yeah, I, 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 I honestly I honestly wouldn't worry about it. You know, come down, bring your little and down to the boats, come with us. You know, and and you know, come into we we'll, a lot of us walk into the ground together, and um, it is it is a safe environment um, for children. There's there's no there's no doubt about that. There's, a, there's enough ways to to stick the boot into the club. Um, but it is a safe environment to go and watch a game of football uh, for children. And and the, the official Amers United protest is going to be away from the stadium and it's going to be very well organised with a full um, cooperation of the Metropolitan Police, of the stadium, of, of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park and the stadium owner itself as well. It's going to be a peaceful uh, protest. And it's easy to avoid. If you, yeah. don't want to get, if you don't want to go anywhere near the protest, it's a very well published prior so you know exactly where it is and what's happening and stuff it's very easy to go to the game and stay well away from the protest and stuff um so keep your eyes out if you want to do that um buster cherry way good name um what clauses do you think are in moise's contract what clauses yes um a pay rise or bonus on the event of staying up um i'm not sure you can put a clause into a contract about how much money is available on transfers because I think if that was the case and Rafa Benitez would have had such a thing at Newcastle, so I'm not sure that's that's quite watertight to do that. I'm pretty sure staying up a natural um a a um an extension will be um, I don't know two year automatic extension is triggered or something like that. I, I, there there will be some uh, yeah pay rise and and more more term on the contract. I'd imagine. Yeah, I think he'll get a great big whopping bonus if we stay up a million pound, two million pound or something straight into his bank account. Um, that'll keep him uh, happy for a little while. I hope there is a relegation one, you know. I do hope if we go down, There's we can sack him for free. Um, I mean, Tom G now, who would you want as manager when we are relegated? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about it. I think it's so easy. It, uh, people know more about about a game than I do in terms of you know up and coming managers and things like that. But I do hate it 
uh, I, when perhaps hate's a strong word, is when people throw names out there, particularly ex club legends, like they're going to automatically be able to wave a magic wand and do something. I mean, somebody even mentioned Joe Cole two days ago. Joe Cole should be the manager. Well, why? No, he shouldn't. So no manager. It's not enough to you know to have once wore a claret and blue shirt. It's just not going to. You know, you have the Canio one. I'm on, I'm on record with. You know, no. You know, just let, let's if we're going to do it. Let's not just take the latest fad or something that says, have a look, and who, who is the best up-and-coming manager? Let's pick a young manager who's on, who's on his way up and who is highly regarded, and you build the team around him. You don't just pick someone because they've been at West Ham before. It doesn't always always work out like that, you know? Uh, I think if we were to go down, I would go after Fark, Norwich as manager. I thought they were brilliant in the championship. They played really good football. Um, I think he's overachieved with the Norwich squad, perhaps. And they've come into the Premier League, and while they're just they're just found out for not being good enough, I think he's come up. He's stuck to the way he wants to play. He's um, I, I think he's done all right actually. I think that he's punched above his weight coming up. They're just not good enough, Norwich. I mean, the only thing you can throw at him, which is not a good thing, is that. Because Wilder has also got a squad not good enough in the Premier League, but they're coping very well. Mm. So, is that an excuse for Fark? I think it is, because they've also had extreme injury problems down there, where Sheffield United have generally been lucky with lack of injuries. And, you know, he's when I was watching the other day uh, against Bournemouth, the commentator was saying about how Egan's played every game, Norwood's played every league match under Wilder since the, since he's joined, not just this season, since he's joined. Um, and I thought, well, he's that's key players, actually. He's had fit all season. The back three's not changed. The wing-backs haven't changed. One or two games, they've had to make one or two changes. The strikers, he's not really got anything going on up there. But I think Fark's been a bit more. So, yeah, I, I would get Fark. And I would like to, the thing is, we will have the best if we get relegated we will have the best squad even if we sell five or six players we should be able to afford to bring in five or six top players for that league and I think we will get like I said before I think we will get one year maybe two where we have a right good run at it um, chuck money at it to get promoted um, so I'll have to take that one um, Andy Walsh what is a must have travel snack Ooh, that's a good question Depends. Oh, that's a... Depends. It depends on the length of travel. I think mm. you've got to take things into the consideration. Also, is it cold? I do like a scotch egg. No, I do like a well. Ah, you say that's what's he got against you? That's a that's your country's um, national yeah, food. So I don't like cold boiled eggs. Oh well, no, no. See, they do one. Uh, they do one in Marks and Spencers, which is um, it's like a posh one. And it's a poached egg, so the yolk is still soft. Oh. It's runny. The yolk's still runny. Oh, it's gorgeous. You get it at delicatessen. You can't get it off the shelf. You've got to go to delicatessen. I feel um, crazy listening to you talking about it. I do like a pie. I, I'm a bit, a bit I have mad. A vegan sausage roll. A vegan sausage. Did we say that on this one or the other one? I can't remember. Uh, I think it was this one. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've not revisited the vegan sausage roll uh, since then. But I did have a very nice steak and kidney pie cold yesterday. Found a, a bakery, a little independent bakery. And, um, and I had a, a, a Viennese whirl. It was a big Viennese biscuit with the, the cream in it and a steak and kidney pie. That was that was me lunch. That's a, that's a lot of And an apple. And an apple. All oh, right, yeah, get that one in there quickly just to get yourself some brownie points. Poor uh, people judging. Uh, and a pie, uh, a scotch oh dear, egg. I, I, look, look, look at, I'm fooling nobody. Look at the state of things in here. Did you eat all them tonight? What? Hey, I, look, look, I'm telling you now. Right? You want to see the state? Seriously. You want to see the, the, the stuff that goes on in this? The, I, was that in cookie vapour from this two weeks? Cave, Honestly, it's... Um, you showed me that cookie vapour two weeks ago. Oh, this is a different cookie wrapper, my friend. Christ almighty, you eat a lot of cookies in that man cave. So there's actually some chocolate peanuts left in here and all. Yeah, I, I listen, I'm a naughty boy. I'm a hungry one as well, by the looks of it. Um, I don't know, I don't know what I would have. Those um, pop chips, I like them. Do you know the barbecue pop chips? No. 
they're in like a white bag with red branding. You don't get much in the bag though. You open them, you get very fast. What's a pop chip? It's how the it's how they're cooked. It's how they're processed. Is that how you Scottish people? What is that? What you call crisps? They're not. Sco- they're not even Scottish. They're not a Scottish band. I think they might be. A, I think they might be owned by Walkers. To be honest with you, I could be wrong. Pop. Chips. And I don't know about a pop chip. I don't know about a pop. I do like a tortilla chip, but jalapeno ones. Very hot tortilla chips. Yeah, well, try barbecue pop chips. You have to have a look for them now. Pop, pop chips. Do, yeah. do they pop? Do they pop? No, they don't. But they, oh. they taste very nice. And um, Phil, Phil, Phil with a naughty surname, which I'm not going to announce. Oh, well. I know. It's not Macook, is it? Phil Macook. No, but it's. I'm trying to see if that's a C or an O at the end, but I'm pretty certain it's a C. Phil McCock. Um, yeah, Phil, I call him Macock, so you okay. don't have to say it. Yeah, Phil Macock. Um, I'm down for the joke, I don't mind. Uh, Phil McCock says, uh, you're stuck on a desert island. What home item would you bring with you? You're taking cookies by the looks of it. Hmm, I'm not just. A pinball machine. Actually, I can't plug it in. I'm not sure how much use it would be. Well, hmm. I suppose that's a question. Does said Desert Island have a health as <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I would um, conveniently take my boat that I have I like uncovered. The boat. The boat's a good one. Um, it's in yeah, cupboard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some reverse osmosis water sanitizer. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, some distillation water distillation device or something. Maybe you'd probably find that quite useful. Um, Anyway, I, know good, you know, I, I was going to say I know a good joke about a desert island, but it's too it's too long um, for a cup of tea at this late stage. Yeah, but see, we'll start wrapping this one up. We've been blathering for quite a while. Um, last question: Ryan Power, ham or cheese? Why not both, Mister Power? Well, I think Why that's the point. I think that's both. the point. You've got to pick one. I only eat melted cheese. I don't eat raw cheese. Why? I don't like it. I don't like it. I only like it when it's been cooked and melted. And, you know, I do. uh, Yeah. So I I will. I'll often say if I go for a a panini or a toasted sandwich, I'll often say, can you make sure the the cheese is melted, please? So to have like a a slice of cheddar in a a sandwich, I think it's, it's, it's not nice. I don't like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to complicate his answer here. If he's talking about a sandwich, just a ham sandwich, just a cheese sandwich, I'm going to go for just ham. Yes. But anything else, it's cheese. If I had to eat a bit of it on its own, it would be cheese. I don't mind a chunk of cheese. I quite like cheese. Um, right, last question. This will be the last one. Um, Ravi says, if you could have one player from any Premier League team to save us, who would you take? And while Gons is thinking, Tom G asks if the bowling pub is closed. It is. It's closed temporarily, though. It's. Ter- I think it's turning into a bit of a bistro bar, actually. Um, so it'll be reopened in future. Just it'll be unrecognisable, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, are you finished in your thinking? No. Well, well, are we doing realistic players? I.e., you can't have Raheem well, there's, Sterling. Well, there's no point, is there? There's no point in doing in doing realistic ones if you're gonna. Okay, then. Uh, then I will. I will pick Sergio Aguero. Mm, yeah, it's, it's funny. Funny to say that. I was gonna. I, I was actually. I wasn't gonna pick Aguero. I was actually gonna pick Harry Kane. Funny enough. Well, he's injured. What's the point in that? Oh well, if he was well, listen, it's not gonna happen anyway. We can at least, if we're gonna pretend that we can sign him, we can surely pretend that he's not injured. Well, in that case, I'll have Jack Wilshire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, well, we'll start. We'll leave that there. Uh, thank you for joining us on this. Uh, it's a bit of an impromptu cup of tea. We're only really doing it because the game got postponed on Sunday, to be honest with you. And people started messaging us going, you better be doing a video because uh, there's not nothing to watch. Well, there's nothing to, I'm surprised we've done it. There's nothing to talk about, quite honestly. Well, managed for an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, no, I've got... I've, 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 yeah, well, I've been I'm struggling, to be fair. Well, not not now, but it's all right when there's two here. Yeah, well, you could do... Um, I don't know. What's your video tomorrow? Have you got I haven't got. I haven't got one. I was even considering not doing one. I've got nothing to talk about. Charlie needs to get a move on. He was supposed to be doing a weekly series. Hmm? He's done one video. Scarpered. 
They did all right. They, people were saying to him, oh, more, more please, Charlie. More please. Yeah, I have yeah. seen more please. I enjoyed it as well. He disappeared. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I've got, um, I've got, I've got nothing. No, if, if I think of something, I'll do one. I can't think of anything at the moment. We've covered it all, my friend. I will, I will brainstorm myself and send you some suggestions. Oh, lovely! Uh, but people, people watching this, if you've got to the end, if you've got suggestions for any Gonzo videos for his lunchtime on the other channel. I'll put them below in the comments, and he can come back and have a read of them. <laughs> how many days have we got? How many days have we got, Phil? Come on, but I don't need one idea. I need many. Well, you've got quite a lot since the next game's up for another week. You've got Press, quite a pressure's few. on. Pressure's on. It is indeed. I'm sure West Ham will cock something up in the meantime. Ah, and give you, can get, you can guarantee <laughs> You can it, just mate. wait. Just ring the media department up and say, what's your next plan of uh, PR on goals, please? So I can They've prepare. basically built the channel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, happy days. But right, anyway, uh, we're, we're, we're disappearing this time. If you want a mug, email mug. us, hammerchat at gmail.com. Polo mug. shirts... Are coming very very soon they're 100 percent coming um we just need to start that's not, the, that's not the material by the way unless you pay extra yes. uh, <laughs> right we're gonna go now this show's just going downhill catch you in a bit thank you for joining us mm-hmm.